Hi everybody and welcome back to Room 9, our region's largest classroom. My name is Miss St. Louis and I'm a teacher at Rogers Elementary School in the Melville School District and we are located in South St. Louis County. Today I'm here to teach a reading lesson that's geared towards students who are in the third grade, but all learners are more than welcome to join in and have fun with us. So let's get started. Today we are going to be exploring a really awesome book and talking a little bit more about comparing and contrasting to finish up our week. But before we get started, sometimes I always like to do a little mindfulness. I know that you guys have been working so hard in school trying to navigate this brand new world that we are living in and things are a little different. And sometimes when things are different, that can be a little stressful for us. So it's great to take a little break, take a little second for mindfulness and get your body ready. So let's close our eyes, take a deep breath in and out. In and out. Remember, we're bringing in all those positive thoughts and taking away all the negative energy. Keep breathing. All right, we're going to spend some time together reading a really cool book, learning some great new information, and having some fun together. Great little break for our minds. In and out, and whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes. Even just a few minutes or a few seconds of taking some really good deep breaths can really help to reset our brain, reset our mood, and get, get us ready for what we're gonna do next. So let's, take, let's go ahead and jump right on in. All right, boys and girls, are you ready for the ultimate compare and contrast challenge? So am I. Today, we're going to be reading a book that's all about comparing and contrasting animals. So before we get in, let's review one last time what comparing and contrasting is. Comparing is talking about how things are alike, whereas contrasting is talking about how things are different. All right, so we can look for words like alike, common, similar, like, both, equally, same, just as, to help us compare. And we can also look for words like unlike, differ, different, indeed, yet, and but that tell us that things are being contrasted, right? We're finding differences. So we're going to see a lot of signal words in the book that we're going to read today. Now, the book we're going to read today is Who Would Win? Polar Bears versus Grizzly Bears. Now, there are lots of Who Would Win books out there that compare two different animals. So if you're looking for a place to start, this might be the type of book that you want to go with. What we're going to do is we are going to create a Venn diagram to help us compare and contrast these two animals. But instead of creating our Venn diagram at the very end, we are going to create it at the beginning and add to it as we read. And the reason for that is this book has a ton of information and we're going to cover all sorts of things. And remembering all of that at the end can be very tricky. So we're going to use a graphic organizer and have that alongside of us as we read to just be able to update and add information to. So for a circle, second circle. So we have polar bears and we have grizzly bears. So at the end of this challenge, once we have decided and co collected all of our information, we're going to see who we think would win in a fight. That's what we're doing. Who's gonna win? Who is stronger? All right. So what would happen if a polar bear and a grizzly bear met each other? What if they had a fight? Who do you think would win? Let's read to find out. During the Arctic winter, polar bears and grizzly bears live far away from each other. But during the summer months, while looking for food, polar bears and grizzly bears sometimes end up in the same location. 
What would happen if they met each other? What would happen if they had a fight? Who would win? The scientific name of a polar bear is Ursus Mar maritimus. Meet the polar bear. Polar bears are considered sea mammals. They spend most of their time on the frozen sea. They prefer to live near the edge of the ice pack. They are the largest of all bears. Fun fact, there are no polar bears in Antarctica. So remember, polar bears live in the North Pole. Penguins live in the South Pole. There are no penguins in the Arctic, so they are completely opposite of each other. All right, so we can probably add some information from this to our chart, right? So polar bears, right, they like the frozen sea. Right, that's their habitat where they live. All right, let's check out the scientific name of the grizzly bear is Ursus, Ursus arctos horribilis, horribilis. Meet the grizzly bear. Grizzly bears are mammals that live on land. You can tell grizzlies by the huge hump at their shoulders. This is a muscle they use for digging. Did you know there are no grizzly bears in the Southern Hemisphere? You know, I, I noticed a word that they had on both pages. They're both mammals. So that's something they have in common, right? They are mammals. Okay, did we learn anything about the grizzly bear here? Yeah, they live on land. So we're not going to find them on the frozen sea up there in the Arctic. Oop, my pages are sticking. Sorry, Black Bear, you're not, you are not in this book because you are not as big and ferocious as grizzlies and polar bears. Fun fact, while on a hunting trip, President Teddy Roosevelt refused to shoot an old bear. Newspapers teased him and from then on, cute stuffed toy bears were called teddy bears. And another fun fact, male bears are called boars. Female bears are called sows. And forget about it, giant panda. You are a plant eater and are no match for a polar bear or a grizzly. So polar bears have snow white fur. Their color allows them to blend in with their environment, snow, slush, and ice. Do you remember what is it called when an animal blends in with, it, in, with its environment? Very good, it's camouflaging, right? Camouflaging is blending in, okay? So we can write here that they have white fur. Okay, so polar bear names, they're called ice bears, Nenux, white bears, or sea bears. Did you know a polar bear's white fur is actually translucent? Translucent means see-through or clear. Whoa, right, so it's not actually white. It's translucent. It looks white, but it's not. How cool is that? I, I've never seen a polar bear up super, super close, so. I couldn't actually tell what color its fur was. Grizzly bears come in four different colors. Dark brown, brown, reddish brown, and blonde. Grizzlies are also called silver tips. These colors allow grizzlies to blend in with their environment, fallen leaves, dirt, rocks, and trees. So these guys come in shades of brown, right? But, there is something they have in common, right, that we just saw. The thing they have in common is they can camouflage, right? The goal is to blend in with their environment. Camouflage. Spelling the best I can and that's all good. Polar bears are the largest predatory land animals. Polar bears can grow to be 10 feet tall. Here is a kindergartner next to a polar bear. What? 
Did you know the polar bear is an apex predator? An apex predator is an animal that has no natural enemies. Interesting fact, polar bears can stand on their hind legs. So he is 10 feet tall. All right, we also learned he's an apex predator, right? It's a great vocabulary word, an apex predator. All right, has no other enemies. A grizzly bear can stand at eight feet tall. They tower over you. So here's someone who's five feet and a grizzly. So they are eight feet tall, let's add that. Fun fact, grizzlies can also stand on their hind legs. So there's one of our key words, right? Also, so they have something in common. They can stand on hind legs. A polar bear paw is larger than this book. Here's the actual size claw. What? Did you know a polar bear paw is slightly webbed? It's like an oar, perfect for swimming. So the front paw and back paw print look different. The front and the back. Remember, if you ever see polar bear footprints, pay attention. In your pike, people say, you never see the one that gets you. So always pay attention. This is a grizzly track. A track is a footprint. Another good vocab word. Their front claws can be four inches long. What? Fun fact, humans have nails on their fingers and toes. Bears have claws. Each paw has five long, sharp claws. So what do we see here? What can we add to our chart? They have claws, right? That's something they have in common. But the grizzly bear has longer claws, right? And we saw that the polar bear, right, has webbed, um, its, its paw is a little web to help it swim. Lots of good information so far. Polar bears are excellent swimmers. They can swim farther than 50 miles at one stretch. Polar bears mostly eat meat from the ocean. Walrus, seals, sea lions, and fish. Seals are their favorite food. Fun fact, polar bears do the dog paddle. Have you ever seen a dog do the dog paddle? Pretty cool. Did you know, yikes, a polar bear can eat a human, but it hardly ever happens. Not many people live near polar bears. Grizzly bears are good swimmers, but they prefer standing in a river to catch fish. If a grizzly stands in the right spot, a migrating salmon might jump right into its mouth. Interesting fact, grizzlies eat salmon, trout, apples, berries, honey, and anything they can get their paws on. Grizzlies also have been known to eat moose, elk, caribou, rodents, sheep, grubs, and clams. Very cool. So what can we add here? What can we add? They both swim, right? They both have the ability to swim. Now we know that a polar bear can swim 50 miles at a time. Right? Whereas the grizzly bear, he doesn't prefer to do that. Now polar bears, right? They eat meat from the ocean. We are running out of space. Whereas grizzly bears, right? They eat meat, but they also eat apples and berries, right? So they eat 
meat and plants. So they are a little bit more adventurous with the things that they eat. Open wide. Ah! Open wide, polar bears have carnivore teeth, canine teeth in front and huge molars in the back. Important fact, polar bears can smell a seal through ice three feet thick. Grizzly bears have teeth that are similar to a polar bear's. Grizzlies have such a good sense of smell that they can detect a dead animal 10 miles away. So what do you think we could add here? They have, yep, they have similar teeth, right? We saw that word similar, right? We're comparing two things. So they have the same teeth. What else? Yeah, they both have a really good sense of smell, right? The polar bear can smell that seal. The grizzly bear can smell that animal. So we can add smell. And another little fact here to help us with our vocabulary. Carnivore means meat eater, right? So if something's a carnivore, it only eats meat. If something's a herbivore, it only eats plants. If something's an omnivore, it eats both plants and, animal, and meat, right? A polar bear can run 25 miles per hour. That is faster than a human can run. Polar bears can run down some caribou. Grizzly bears look slow. Oh. Grizzly bears look slow, but don't be fooled. Grizzly bears can easily outrun a human. They are fast. Speed limit, 35. Did you know a grizzly is faster on land? A polar bear is probably faster on ice, right? Because a grizzly doesn't spend a lot of time on ice. So we can add their speed limit to our chart. So a polar bear, 25 MPH. That stands for miles per hour. And our grizzly bear, 35 MPH. So who would win if they had a fight? The polar bear or the grizzly bear? I don't know. Here is a polar bear skeleton. Goofy fact, all polar bears are left-handed. What about you? Are you left-handed or right-handed? Now we determine that based on the hand that you use the most. So I am right-handed, it's the hand I write with. But some people are left-handed, they use their left hand most. And some people are what's called ambidextrous, they use both hands to do things. Pretty cool. Interesting fact. The sun bear from Asia grows to be only five feet tall, the average height of a human. Bear skeletons are somewhat similar to a human's. Four limbs, five fingers, five toes, a backbone, ribs, head, neck, and hips. And here's this complete skeleton of a grizzly bear. So sad fact. The silver, bear, the silver bear from Mexico was hunted to extinction. What does that mean, extinction? Exactly, that means that they're no longer here, right? We know that dinosaurs are extinct. They no longer live on our planet. So when something is extinct, it means that it's no longer here. It's been wiped out either through hunting or disease, right? So it's really important that when we go to zoos, we pay attention to what they are classifying animals as because at lots of zoos, they tell us if animals are endangered, right? Which means that they're close to being extinct. Their habitats and their lives are um, being threatened by other people. So we have to make sure that we are doing our best to protect our animals. Interesting fact. Scientists have studied bear DNA and think that the polar bear and grizzly bear are descended from the same animal, both adapted to their environments. What does that mean, adapted? Yeah, fair, you guys are right. So when you adapt to something, you change your behavior and the way you act 
based on what's around you. So polar bears, right, they live in that really cold climate up there in the Arctic. So they had to change their behaviors. They had to think about where they lived, how they um, hunted food, whereas polar bears or polar bears, grizzly bears, they live down here in areas like North America and forests. So their um, environment is different. Polar bears prefer the sea, grizzlies prefer to live on land. Only an expert osteologist, a bone scientist, can tell their bones apart. So their skeletons are very similar. We are running out of space. They have lots in common. That might make making a decision at the end harder. Polar bears are solitary animals. They rarely fight each other and mostly stay away from each other. Grizzly bears are also solitary animals. Ooh, I saw a signal word. But groups of grizzlies sometimes fish together during a salmon migration. So they are solitary animals. Do you know what that means if something is solitary? Very good. It means that it likes, right, you like to be on your own, right? If you're solitary, you're by yourself. Now, this also had a good um, vocab word, migration. What is migration? Yeah, so migration is when animals move from one spot to another. So oftentimes we see migration with birds when we're going into the winter. So we know that the birds fly south, right, towards the warmer areas when winter is coming. So they are migrating. Lots of animals migrate with different weather patterns. Male polar bears do not hibernate. They spend all winter, winter looking for food. They might build a snow cave to sleep away an unusually bad storm. Female polar bears build a maternity den, usually in the snow and ice, to spend the winter and take care of their cubs. This conserves the mom's energy. Did you know hibernation is when an animal goes into a resting state of inactivity with a slower heartbeat, no eating or drinking, and a lower body temperature? Just before the winter, grizzlies eat as much as they can to fatten up for a long sleep. Grizzly bears have a deep winter sleep, but it is not true hibernation. A grizzly can wake up and suddenly attack you. In the springtime, grizzlies are hungry. Watch out. So we see that we have, they both live in caves, right? Different kinds of caves, but they live in caves, right? They'll stay in caves. Now we saw that both don't hibernate, right? But the grizzly bear, right, he takes that long sleep, a long winter nap. Oh, I'm running out of space. Right, whereas the polar bear, the male does not sleep and the female stays with the baby. Funny polar bear stories. A U.S. Navy nuclear sub surfaced in the Arctic ice, only to find a few polar bears snooping around. Sometimes polar bears take naps in the funniest positions. Look at him. He's so silly. A famous nature photographer waited for days to get a good picture of a polar bear. He was eating lunch in his pickup truck when one day he saw a surprise in his rear view mirror. That would be kind of scary, don't you think? Funny grizzly bear stories. An Alaskan man came home to find a grizzly bear relaxing in his jacuzzi. What? A sailor anchored in a harbor in Alaska was awakened by a noise. He found a grizzly bear walking around his yacht. Scared out of his wits, he pushed the grizzly off with an oar. Using a cheeseburger, a tourist lured a grizzly bear into his car. The foolish man wanted to get a nice picture of the bear sitting with his wife. The woman was screamed and confused the bear away. It is summer. A polar bear steps off the ice onto the beach. A grizzly bear comes out of the woods. They see each other. They can smell each other. Both bears stand to get a better look. Then it happens. The grizzly charges at the polar bear, growling and showing its teeth. The polar bear crouches down, paws up, ready for battle. Running at full speed, the grizzly knocks over the polar bear. The polar bear gets right up and fights back. Whap! He smacks the grizzly in the face. Ouch! They claw, scratch, and bite. It's a nasty fight. They wrestle, each trying to get the advantage. 
Rolling around, both bears get dirty from the sand and mud. The grizzly is relentless. It keeps on fighting. What do you think? Look at all of our information. Polar bears, grizzly bears, who's going to win? Hmm. Make a prediction in your head, right? A prediction is using all of the information that we already have, right? Both everything that we've learned from the book and our schema, right? What well, we already know about these animals and guessing what we think is gonna happen next. Who do you think is gonna win? The polar bear or the grizzly bear? See, and we have some votes for both. Let's see. The grizzly wins. But now he is sore. Oh, sorry, Mrs. Spot. Suddenly the bear, polar bear sees no point in fighting anymore. There is no reason to fight to the death. The polar bear runs away. The grizzly wins, but now he is sore and tired. He hopes he never runs into a polar bear again. These two bears are so similar. Next time, the outcome could be much different. The end. So this is a really great book to be able to compare side by side two very similar animals and see what they have in common and what they have that's different and what could be advantages to them in something like a fight. Pretty cool. All right, you guys have worked so hard this week comparing and contrasting things. I am so proud of all the hard work that you have done. It's super impressive. Now, I'm so happy that you joined me this week, that you got to learn alongside of us, explore some of these nonfiction books and how we can compare and contrast. We also talked about prefixes and suffixes this week and how they work alongside words to help change up their meaning a little bit. So we've covered a lot of information. I know that you guys are working so hard. Thank you for joining me and I promise I'll see you again next time with something brand new and super fun. Bye guys, have a great day. Teaching in Room 9 is made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you.